I'm now going to discuss what is meant by a continuous time Markov chain. In my discussion, I'm going to assume that we still have discrete space. And so we can write the, space, uh, the states down like this. This is a two-state Markov chain with states one and two. In the discrete time case, we will transition from state one to state two or stay in state one on a clock tick. In a continuous time case, we will have the transition to the from one state to another that can happen at any point in time independent of the clock. To understand this better, let us assume, let us consider a Markov chain which has these, three, these, these states like this, where from state one, we can go to state two or state three. And let's suppose that the transition from out of state one happens at time one. So we leave state one at time t1. So what we say is that we have some distribution of the random variable x t1, and we have some probability that x t1 equals 2, and we have some probability that x t1 equals 3. So this looks very much like the discrete time case where we say probability of x2 equals 2, probability x2 equals 3 here, except that we're now going to index it by the time instant at which the transition happened. And so once we understand this, then the, relative, then the rest of the discussion is relatively the same as it is for discrete time Markov chain. We say that a stochastic process uh, is forms a continuous time Markov chain if, so it's a continuous time Markov chain if for all n, all integers n belonging to, so i, n belonging to i, and for all sequence of times t, so for all t1, t2, etc., t n plus 1, such that t1 is less than t2, less than n plus 1. So basically this is the set of times at which the, Marco, uh, the stochastic process transitions from one state to another. The probability that the random variable x tn plus 1, so tn plus 1, is equal to j, given that x t1 equals I1, that's the first state, x t2 equals I2, the second state, etc., and x t n equals uh, I n is equal to the probability of x t n plus 1 equals j, conditional only on the last time step, which is x t n equals I n. So the future, which is xtn plus 1, depends on the past only through what is interpreted as being the current state, xtn being the current state in. So given this uh, a kind of framework, the definitions of homogeneity, or time homogeneity, irreducibility, recurrence, periodicity, ergodicity, which you uh, describe for discrete time Markov chains, continue to hold uh, for continuous chains with basically no change, so we won't really consider that over here. Let's uh, also briefly look at the residence time for continuous time marker chains. Residence time in a state uh, for continuous time Markov chains. And uh, we will just say that uh, analogous to the geometric property, or uh, the fact that the residence time is, is geometrically distributed random variable, for the continuous time uh, Markov chains, it will be an exponentially distributed random variable, so that if we denote the residence time in state j, rj, is the residence time, the expected residence time in state j, so expected residence time in state j, then uh, the probability that 
r j exceeds some value s plus t given r j is greater than s is nothing more than probability r j greater than t. So what you're saying is that if we've already been in the state for time duration s, the probability that we are in the state for t steps more, or t time units more, is uh, is essentially the same as being in that state for t time units more. There is no past history, no past history, and this is comes from the uh, memorylessness property of the exponential distribution.